Let's work on facing our fears today, shall we? This guy is an 18 by 24. And I've done this before. I've done this before. Look, that guy, also an 18 by 24. I've accomplished this before and I've liked the results. I avoid making big paintings at all costs. You can see, actually, the latest painting I did was like a hundredth of the size that this is. And it was great, it was comfortable. I finished it in like an hour. So I'm giving myself a good challenge. I want to be able to regularly create larger sized paintings. I love, 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 love the look of larger sized paintings. The <laughs> time commitment and the focus required really make me struggle with doing big paintings. We're pushing ourselves. We're pushing ourselves to do something challenging that I've accomplished before, so it's not too crazy. I know I'm capable. <laughs> it's just something I generally avoid, but I want to be able to keep doing. And it's one of those things too, the more I do it, the more comfortable I'm gonna get with it. I'm just scared of doing it in general and avoid it, cause I know it's hard. And like, girl, you gotta do things that are hard sometimes to get the results you want for things. So yesterday I made two itty bitty tiny little paintings just to get those out of my system and be like, yes, I love making tiny paintings and we can make a big painting too. So I'm thinking water cause that's my like, that's my heart and soul subject right now is water. So it's an easy subject for me to stay focused on. So that's what I'm going to make on this guy. I'm gonna give myself kind of a time constraint. I wanna get this done in three days. So it's a Thursday morning, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are my time limits for this painting. Just so that I don't have to feel like, this is gonna take me literally forever and years. I'm giving myself exactly the amount of time that I have to get it done. That way, not only will I be less stressed about how long it'll take me, because I have exact time constraints, I also will kind of push myself to do it at the exact amount of speed that I want, instead of, um, being way too meticulous and doing every detail and uh, making it too worked. I don't wanna overwork this painting. So what I want this to be is just practice. Straight up, this is exposure therapy for me for big paintings. That's what this is. Let's see what we can do. Let's face our fears. So I think, I was thinking about using this easel right here to paint it, but I'm actually, much more comfortable painting at my desk. This little table easel I have is a little bit too small. So I'm gonna grab this guy here. It's not the most secure easel ever. I use it for display purposes or to let my paintings dry on, but let's see how it does. takes up like definitely half my desk <laughs> but it's feeling pretty secure so I think I'm gonna give this a try I can always switch my easel if I'm really struggling with it and my easel upstairs in my recording studio is definitely one I can use too but I think I'd really love to just be super comfy chill sit at my desk have my coffee while I'm working on this so we're gonna give this guy a shot. I'm also gonna be using um, oil paints for this guy for sure, probably an acrylic underlayer. And some, what do you call this? Palette paper. It's just a big amount of space for me. It's really convenient. I also already have a bunch of paints on here that I don't really wanna move around. So I think I'm gonna use this as my palette. I also need big brushes because all of my brushes are itty bitty because I paint itty bitty things. <laughs> so let's see what we can find. So the biggest brushes I have in my studio are these Liquitex Basics acrylic brushes. They're fairly big. They're still not huge. 
The thing about these though, and why I haven't used them is because I don't like long bristles. They're too soft for me. I don't like how they feel on my painting. They just go too flat, too fast. I prefer shorter bristles like some of these have that are more sturdy. They don't go so flat. So I think I'm gonna actually try cutting them and see what that does for me. Uh, but this is as big as I have. Otherwise, the biggest brushes in my studio are this big, which still, comparatively to this canvas, is extremely small. And these, the biggest of these, is still pretty small. So, I went into my wife's workshop and I stole a couple things. Uh, I have these workshop brushes that my wife uses to like stain wood or something. They're not, I don't think they're really meant for oil painting, but I've seen people use these like just like cheapo. I mean, these aren't necessarily cheapo. These are pretty cheapo, but this one's pretty good. Just big like workshop brushes. So for big areas, I'm gonna use these, see what I can do there. I'll buy her some new brushes if she misses them but I think that's what I got. I don't want to buy anything new. I've been buying a lot of art supplies recently and I just, <laughs> I don't need any more. I already am like running out of room in this space. I need some more like organization and storage before I start buying a bunch more crap. So we're gonna stick with this stuff for right now. All right, so I just finished mixing up my colors. I got a lot of them and I still feel like I did not mix up enough. I'm likely gonna have to go back and mix up more as I go along, cause this one's so big. Uh, but I have a good base to start with. I've got some super vibrant colors for some of the prismatic rainbow effects that are in the ripples. And then the darker muted colors for more of the like shading of the water. This is my reference photo. I took it last like September. It feels ambitious, but I'm excited to give it a try. I love the vibrancy and the the warmer yellower oranger pieces in there. ground color of cobalt teal with this Liquitex soft body acrylics because this cobalt teal and oils is a really serious part of the whole painting. It's just like my favorite color right now and you can see based on the reference photo that it is perfect for getting those super vibrant blues. I also discovered that this little easel that I tried to put this on is too flimsy so it looks like I'm gonna switch over to that big serious evil over there. Evil. All right, setup took a lot longer than expected. I have had to reorient my whole desk area. I had to move my lights. I had to re-screw in some little screws because it wasn't sturdy enough. I had to figure out how to get my little canvas lamp to be able to film. I had to figure out where to put my everything and how to get the cords to be plugged in the right way so my laptop can be plugged in so this can be plugged in i don't think i'm gonna be able to get this plugged in i don't have an eccentric cord Whew. i started this whole process today at like nine and it's already almost 12 and i don't know how it got that long and i'm only this far <laughs> on this painting i'm just about to start the first brush strokes which are always the scariest uh wish me luck i'm gonna get like I'm gonna freehand draw with my oils, the general ripples from my reference photo back there. 
and really work on making sure the proportions are what I want, the spacing's what I want, and just laying out those main highlights before I start blocking in any color. So that's my goal for right now. Okay, this is where I'm at after, what time is it? After about an hour, a little less than an hour maybe. Um, and I am struggling with my lighting for sure. My eyes are feeling really tired. So I'm thinking about taking my painting outside into the sunroom where there's more natural light and seeing if that is better for me, but it means moving all my shit once again. This is, this, see, I, and I'm like, why do I avoid this? I'm just scared. And I'm like, no, it's hard. I don't have the setup for it. I'm really figuring it out and I need to go through the motions to be able to figure out how to make it happen. But right now it's annoying as I'm learning how to do things. So I'm going to take this guy outside and try and do some painting out there if it's not too hot and or cold. It is eight o'clock. We had some family over and uh, we're just hanging out in the sunroom and I was painting while we we're just sitting and chatting. It was very nice and now it's like eight and I want to keep painting, but I can't paint for too much longer because it's going to get dark. So I'm going to do what I can. This is where I'm at. This is the latest. I'm starting to get some of those greens in there. It's sort of taking the form of water now. So I'm going to put my little phone up there and do a little time lapse, see what else I can get done. It's been an hour. It's been an hour and this is where it's at and I need to go to bed now. Actually, I need to take a shower. Wash off, paint them off me. I have not painted yet today. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, when you own your own art business. You don't get to just paint all day, unfortunately, like I dreamed I would as a child when I was like, I'm gonna be an artist. Uh, there's lots of administrative stuff you have to do. There's lots of little odds and ends you have to keep up on. And this morning I had to make some thumbnails and I had to do some posting and I had to do some content making. <sighs> Which I'm not gonna lie, is really hard for me. I 
have focus issues big time. And when you are an artist with a business online and you're a creator trying to put out content, there are so many tiny little tasks that you're trying to do all the time to keep up with promoting yourself. Um, that's a whole different part of your making. So it ends up being like such a huge chunk of my workload is actually the business and promotion and content creation um, and not the actual art making, uh, which is hard for me. It's a really hard part of doing what I do full time. And if it's hard for you, like you're not alone. And I know there's a lot of artists out there that make it look so easy. And I'm sure for a lot of people, I make it look easy too. Be like, oh man, she puts out content all the time. It's getting stuff out. She makes awesome paintings all the time. I wish I could do that. It's hard, it's hard, and I definitely compare myself to other artists who seem to be doing it better than I do when I know that's not true. It's just part of the system, <laughs> part of owning your own business online. But as soon as I sit down and start painting, I know I'm gonna feel a lot better about what I'm doing. So I'm gonna mess up this spin drift and I'm going to work on some painting. I think I'm gonna start inside and I'm gonna move outside when it's a little warmer. And I actually think I might be able to finish this painting today. So that would be really nice, no pressure, but I think I might be able to get it done today. I got a whole lot more done yesterday than I expected, so we'll see. Okay, three hours later, I'm getting a lot closer. It looks like I'm almost, almost done. All of the like rainbow reflections that I was able to get in there are looking really good. Really at this stage, trying not to keep it too clean because I have my uh, like realism tendency where I try and make everything as perfect to the photo as possible. So, and I'm trying to let that go because I don't want that to be how I do all my paintings. And so in this stage, I started to try and not look at my reference photo as much and instead go with what I feel like was needed. Because one, I feel like that enhances my, my painting and be it makes it more like a painting and not just like a copy of a photo. And it also, helps me feel less self-conscious in my realism focused brain. Because like when I look at the reference photo and then my painting, I'm like, oh, but it doesn't look like the reference photo. And that's not the point for me. I I'm trying to make that not the point for me where it has been the point for me in the past when I was really like, especially learning how to paint. And now I'm like, okay, where, where do I make this painting past what my reference photo is? Where is it really my painting and my creativity and my vision past the reference photo? And like, yeah, the reference photo is kind of my vision because I saw it and I took the photo and I really enjoyed that image, but now I'm taking that image and enhancing it with my painting for my vision. I don't know, I'm having all these crazy weird artsy thoughts about how to <laughs> really express myself and my ideas and my feelings in my work. Cause I'm getting to this phase where obviously I'm still learning, I'm always gonna be learning, but I'm so happy with my work and I'm like, okay, how do I stop necessarily being in the learning phase on how to paint things and being more in the like creation phase of like, I've learned all these things, now let's put them all to use. Does that make sense? It's, and it's all blended. It's all like, I'm still always gonna be learning, but I feel like I've been doing this for enough years now that I have collected enough skills that I'm almost guaranteed to be happy with every painting that I make. And so I'm like, okay, how do we push that now? Anyway, I need to eat. 
So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to step away from the painting. I'm going to get some fresh eyeballs and then I'm going to come back and see what else I can do to just push it a little further and then be done. Like I want to be done now, but I also want just a little bit, a little bit more. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do. Let's go get a snack. Bobby. Hey, Gomez. Do you want a treat? Let's go. Good boy. Do you guys want a cheesy snack? Yeah? What about a little Swiss? You want a little Swiss? A little Swiss cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Meeting. Can you spin? Good girl! Gomez, can you spin? Oh, you want to do something different? You want to be pretty? Yeah, you want to be pretty? So pretty. Good boy. Eat your cheese. Good boy. Yup, 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 yup. All right, here's my game plan. I want to highlight a little bit more of some of these ripples that get really bright. And there are also some like really deep blues in some of this part where I put in purple, but I'm kind of missing the blue a little bit. So I wanna add some blue back in. And I also want to highlight some of these lines here. See how those are like really white there and there. I wanna really highlight those here. I wanna do a little more up here. I wanna keep it messy. I keep being like, oh, it looks messy. I should clean it up. I wanna keep it looking loose. When you look back, it's awesome, right? I keep getting like really, really close and being like, oh, it doesn't look good when you look at it right here. Look how messy it is. Like, <laughs> girl, no. Back here, this is how it should be viewed. It can be viewed from here, it can be viewed from here. And it's like, oh yeah, look up close. There's all a bunch of brush strokes. That's how paintings work, girl. You gotta hold me accountable, buddy. I gotta keep it loose, okay? Do you hear me? Keep me accountable. All right, I'm ready to be done. So let's talk through my painting a little bit. I obviously went for a very, very greeny color, that cobalt teal that I had at the beginning. This color right here was extremely important to the whole painting, but I also wanted to make sure, he's playing with this little octopus down there. I also wanted to make sure I brought in all of these rainbows. They're in the, the like prismatic effect of the water ripples on the uh, floor, the like sand. So I brought in a lot of that and definitely heightened that and accentuated it way more than it was in my reference photo because I really wanted that rainbow effect and that like really potent vibrancy to be a huge part of this painting. I did bring in these little bubbles, just kind of really loose, small, not super detailed little bubbles. I almost didn't bring them in, but they were in the reference photo. So I decided to throw them in because bubbles are very cute. The sparkles are similar. I did add a little bit more of a sparkle, just some more smaller little speckles of sparkle. Uh, I also, because there's a lot of texture in my reference photo and there were some parts of my painting that were feeling a little bit flat, I tapped my brush in a couple different colors and a bunch of the more solid colored areas just to give a smidgy more texture to the painting. I did a lot of brushing out, so it was a lot of really thin layers if you look up close. You can see the canvas texture really well. There's not a lot of thick layers. The only thick layer of paint is the white. The only part that's white on my painting is these bits of the sparkle. And I can, did use a little 
thicky amount of paint, pretty thick there. You can see the brush strokes, but everything else was really thin layers, lots of brushing out with this little soft brush I have. It's like a really fat wide filbert that I loved. And I basically the whole time just brush, 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 brush out every time I, I wanted something. I also used a lot of this liquid drying medium. Well, it's drying and um, also helps with flow. And so I was able to do a lot of layers without too much blending. So even when I wanted to, like I was like, ooh, I wanna blend out this area too, too late. So that one's nice and stark. There's a lot of more sharp edges up here because I didn't brush them out early enough, but I kind of like that effect up here where you're seeing the surface of the water, the like waves on the surface of the water at the top, and then at the bottom, you're seeing more through the water to the ripples. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And I'm also exhausted. Wow, it just, yeah, it looks really good. I love, I took the greens, and I brought them through the center here and then had darker colors come up through this part. So there was a lot of like, lots of dynamic motion obviously in the ripples, but I really wanted some dynamic movement of the contrast of the color. And it's really subtle, but it turned out so good. There's warmth down here, there's warmth in the center. It's cool up here, it's a little cooler here. Oh, oh, it's good. It's really good. I'm stoked on how this turned out many more of these to come. I've got a lot more reference photos that are very like, similar to this and I really enjoyed painting this. I think I'm going to do some more in some smaller ones. Maybe I'll mess with the different, um, I'll do some like photo editing to like adjust the colors. Maybe I'll do a slightly bluer toned painting. Maybe one that's really, really green. <sighs> I'm pretty proud of this. I'm pretty proud of this and I'm gonna remind myself of that because I can get super perfectionist-y and I'm like, <laughs> that mark is off. It's fine. It's actually really beautiful when you look back. I'm feeling really good about it. All right. <laughs> I'm just excited about it. I don't want to turn off my camera, <laughs> but I'll let you go. Oh, and Beanie's hungry. She says, it's dinner time. Oh, I only got this done in two days. I gave myself three days for this and I got it done in two days. That means I get to do whatever on Saturday. Hey, I'm gonna do nothing. I'm gonna eat more Lucky Charms and snuggle my doggies. How's that sound, Beanie? Do you wanna eat more Lucky Charms and snuggle? It's her dinner time. She really wants food. Yeah, I see. Beanie, do you want dinner? <laughs> That's their cutest trick. Oh, you killed it! Oh, you killed your octopus! Good job, buddy. Okay, I'll let you go now. I'll see you in the next video.